grab a big hardcover book and read some literature. Welcome back to my forever uneven bangs. Today I want to tell you about some summer books that you have to read before summer is over and I also think that I want to pick out a couple of my favorites that I've read so far in 2022. So let's do that. I'm going to go and pick out all of the summer books that I do believe you should try to pick up before the season is over. That wasn't very graceful. Okay so book number one is going to be Over What Hill by Effie Leland Wilder. Let me just tell you about Little Miss Effie, okay? So Over What Hill is a sequel to Effie's first novel that she wrote when she was 85. So just in case any of you were thinking it was ever too late to start something, it's not. It says in parentheticals, notes from the pasture, which essentially means the twilight years. Yes, the retirement home. She has written stories about people she's met, encountered things that they've told her i think it's one of the most wholesome summary books well it goes through the entire year however it's a quick one day read the stories are hilarious and there's so much life advice that she put in here she tucked it all neatly for us into cute little sentences and funny stories but i'm telling you what it ranges from a lot of topics like addiction sorrow, overcoming things, and it's kind of like just sitting down with an elderly woman and asking her, do you have any advice for me? That's what reading this is pretty much about. And the main takeaway for me was to try to be more kind, always, and appreciate every day that comes, because I'm really trying to get better at that. Book number two is going to be Rose Cottage by Mary Stewart. This book is about a war widow who is asked by her grandmother to go to an old cottage to receive some paperwork, but then strange things start happening and then things get twisted and it's kind of like you have to unravel everything like a vine. This next novel is called Dance With Me by the author Luann Rice and it is about a woman who comes home and she has to come back and try to figure out how to deal with where she left off, including with her family and her community. And she has to confront the memories of her past from this place, from where she grew up. And there's also another guy who is essentially doing the same thing, but I think that it is really summery because it's set around a town in Rhode Island and it has a whole bunch of apple orchards and stuff. Listen. I'm probably going to rave about the Shady Hollow series until I take my last breath. Cole Clay does not need to be read after Shady Hollow in case you want to just go and get this one. It is set in the summertime. There's been bones that are discovered in the nearby apple orchard. And then there's also a new mink that moves into town. She makes an etiquette academy. And you know, she's really sus. I'm going to say that. Super sus. I've talked about this book before in other videos, but yes. Cold Clay definitely goes in the summer need to read pile for you. And then in fall, I'm more than likely gonna put Shady Hollow number one into the fall like need to read pile as well. Hatching Magic by the author Anne Downer. And she wrote this book in 2002 and I got it from a scholastic book fair at my elementary school. I bought it when I was five and I didn't open it until now, when I'm 25. So I hadn't opened this book in 20 years. I didn't even get past the first chapter when I was a kid, so I don't count that as opening it. Theodora Oglethorpe is a young girl and it is summer break and her father goes off to do some botany stuff or whatever. He's out in another country doing his thing, okay? In another realm, a thousand years before, there's a wizard who is taking care of his pregnant dragon and then the dragon gets loose and the dragon falls through a portal and goes to Theodora's time and realm and then guess what the wizard has to come and get the dragon but not before his evil brother follows him through and then it's just a kind of a mashup of all different kinds of characters. This book definitely touches on a lot of subjects and the, the main thing that I took away from it is to remember to have fun. It's okay to read children's books. It doesn't 
matter as long as you like what you are reading. It includes paganism and it paints it in such a friendly light, which I I like a lot. So the next book, and I'm gonna be honest, I haven't even gotten all the way through it myself. I have not gotten through this book yet. Um, that's my own problem. However, the next book is Emma by Jane Austen, because why not? I mean, of course, to me, trying to read this is also like trying to read another language. I mean, I don't know when at what point we started learning the English that we speak today, but I feel like if I tried to understand, it just seems like a hundred to a couple hundred years ago, they, I don't know, they, they spoke with a lot more intelligence. I'll just say that. I know I have to have a bookmark in here. Well, I don't, but anyways, Emma, is definitely a classic. I'm trying to get through this one. I bought it in May and I still haven't gotten through it yet, which don't we all do that? Don't we all kind of buy a whole bunch of books and we're like, okay, yeah, now we're set. And then you go back on every word that you said and you go buy it. Does anyone still read Nicholas Sparks? I haven't read Nicholas Sparks since, what is it, Nights in Rodanthe. I am once again suggesting that you go and read Gallon, Coming of Age, Young Adult, mystery, horror, suspense. Oh my God, it's fantastic. There's so many good themes in this book. I think that is all for the summer books. So now I'm gonna go and pick out my absolute favorites of the year so far. The Last Ritual. Arkham Horror, I believe it started out as a game and there is a series of these, but they're not chronological and it doesn't matter which order you read them because every story is different. The Last Ritual is about a man named Alden Oaks who is being interviewed. Alden Oaks goes way back to the 1920s during this interview to tell this journalist about his literal cosmic horror. I was book mourning after this one. I didn't know how to go on and read another one after this. I really didn't. I am currently obsessed with the 1920s. Just the aesthetic and even furniture and I guess the characteristics that are romanticized with any decade, whatever someone likes the most about the way that they dressed or their hair or their style. The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I talked about this in actually in the winter, I made a video just about unboxing this book. However, I don't ever think I talked about it on camera that much besides maybe the synopsis. However, um, this one is set hundreds of years ago in Amsterdam. I honestly can't believe how much they chopped out of the series. It's just so good. I've never felt more heartbroken reading a book. Maybe Gallant. Gallant might have topped that. However, they might be solid contenders. It's like trying to pick between two favorite children. The Sophie's Choice of books. And this last one, the Libby app allows you to kind of like, well, not kind of, it allows you to connect to your local library's digital library. Kind of been getting more into graphic novels. This one that I got is called The Ice Cream Man. It's actually amazing. It's horror and dark comedy, and it's extremely satirical, but also very literal and also philosophical, phenomenal, cosmic. It's an entire Easter basket full of eggs and you just, in every new chapter, you just pick out a new egg and then you look at what you get and it's like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. The splash pages are immaculate. It was 403 pages. I would say the last 20 or so are storyboards and scripts. I'm gonna try to start incorporating my writing over to the YouTube channel as well. I've actually never shamelessly promoted it. So if you wanna read some spooky horror stories they're short short stories under a thousand words they are free on my website or you can go right to my smash words page everything is going to be linked below in the campsite bio why not start shamelessly promoting myself and i also have a children's book out i illustrated it and wrote it myself i wrote it for school but you know i'm graduated now and i would just really love for more eyes to see it and if you are interested in scripts screenplays, that kind of writing. I have a lot of scripts over on my website too. Everything is there for your eyes to wander upon and scoop up. So take advantage of it. And I believe, okay, yeah, now I'm done blabbering. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it's gonna be about writing. Bye.